The standard system of dimensioning was the plus-minus system, in which, for example, we have a dimension of 10 millimeters, and then you give it a size limit, for example, plus-minus 0.1. But let us look at this example and see if this system really is ideal. So, if you have this simple assembly here, which is this box, that has the dimensions 10 times 10, and now you have this part with a hole, and it also has the dimensions of 10 times 10. Now you want this box to fit inside the hole, so you go ahead and define the tolerances as follows. The box has to always be smaller than the hole. So 10 minus 0.0, .0 and 10 minus 0.1 for both edges. This way, you can be sure that the box will always be smaller than the hole. And you do the exact opposite on the hole side, by giving it plus tolerances, so 10 plus 0.1. You guarantee this way that every box will fit in every hole manufactured. That's the plus minus system. This system of tolerancing was the standard system in every industry. Everybody was happy with it until Mr. Stanley Parker finally stated that this system has a lot of limitations. There are many deviations that cannot be controlled by using the plus minus system. Going back to the example, if the real parts look like this, so you measure there, and you find that it's 10 or less, and there you find it's also 10 or less, so it fits the tolerance. So according to the drawing specification, this part is okay, but while assembling it, you will have something that looks like that. It cannot be assembled because of how wavy it is. So you see the limitations here for just using the plus minus tolerance. It resulted in us accepting a part that should not have been accepted. Mr. Parker introduced a book in the late 50s, introducing other ways to tolerance parts using a new system called GD&T, Geometric Dimensioning and Tolerancing, which is a system of tolerancing, but does not depend on putting plus, minus tolerances on the size dimension, but it uses other symbols and another logic. This system was at first largely adopted in the arms industry, that got gradually adopted by many other industries, until currently it's the standard in almost every mechanical engineering industry. And the GD&T gives us the power to control the form of the elements. I can control that line, that one here that was not straight, and resulted in me accepting a part that was not okay. To be straight, I can tolerate the flatness of the surfaces so they don't become wavy. I can relate the orientation of features of the part to each other. For example, I can say that this surface should be parallel to that surface, and this line has to be perpendicular to that line. I can also control the location. For example, the location of the hole. I can even control, directly on the drawing, the rotary function of the part that rotates while being mounted on a bearing. We will see later how to use all these tolerances, but we can divide all the tolerances in GD and T into four main groups or families. There are the form tolerances, and there are the orientation tolerances, and then you have location tolerances and runout tolerances. Runout tolerances control the function of a part rotating. If you designed using only the plus minus tolerances nowadays, it's like going to a construction site with only an axe. But using GD and T is like going to a construction site with modern construction machinery and equipment. Because the way they had to use the plus-minus tolerances in the past to still achieve the function is by making these tolerances narrow. So instead of using 10 plus-minus 0.1, you had to use 10 plus-minus 0.01. Narrowing the tolerance zone means more cost. It's not that you cannot use the plus-minus system alone, but using a combination of the two systems results in great efficiency and saves money. We can see how much more power we have in the design to ensure that the part meets the function without having the narrow tolerances unnecessarily. Using GD and T saves money, time and disputes, and reduces inefficient communication between the design and manufacturing departments.